Welcome to Belgium, the home of the reigning world snooker champion, a man who couldn't buy a win at the Crucible until April of this year, where he seemingly threw out the rule book and did things his way. Potting his way past the legends of the game naturally was quite a cause for celebration, but as he partied his way to the top on very little sleep and practice, how did he win his first world title? Well, let's go find out and meet the man, the myth, the maverick, Luca Brissell. Well, Luca, we just had a fantastic meal in your hometown. I'm not going to offend you by pronouncing it. Can, can you do the honours? This is Lut, actually. Yeah. Oh, Lut. Okay. My parents were born in this place. Okay. But I live in my Smechlitz, my about 10 minutes from here. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for coming to chat with us today. Yeah, no um, let's start off then, obviously, with the Worlds. Okay, 11 years it took you to win a game at the Worlds. Was there ever a thought in your mind, this isn't the tournament for me? Um, yeah, especially this year, I didn't really feel like hmm. winning it um, because I wasn't confident going into it. But um, yeah, I just won my first game and after that I started to feel confident. Okay. And I think a couple of, of uh, people were saying I was, um, I had a chance of making a good run, like Steve Davis yeah. said it, I think, after the first game. He said if, if Luca wins his first game, he could get on a roll. And yeah, that's exactly what happened. So I'm, I'm really lucky to win it because I had no expectations at all. So. I know. I remember you saying after you won the title, I have no idea how I've done this. How yeah. did I do this? Yeah. And now maybe looking back now that the dust has settled and the emotions have gone and, you know, reflecting back, do you, do you, do you, do you know how you've done it now? Um, or, yeah. or what clicked for you, perhaps? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I just played really well, especially at the end of the games. Mm. Every time when it got close, I sort of made a couple of breaks to win the game. And um, so, yeah, I had to play at my nearly at my best to win it um, because, I mean, I, I made so many breaks and mm. still I could have lost every game. Actually, I could have lost yeah. to Ricky, could have lost <laughs> to Williams, should have lost to Ronnie and C. So, mm, mm, mm. Um, yeah, it's all about details in this game. And I just got get lucky sometimes and, and play really well to win it. Well, I think, you know, um, what people were saying most is not that you won it, it was the way that you won it. Yeah. You know, it was the comebacks, it was the, you know, the, the final frames with immense difficulty and, and carefully constructed breaks. Were, were you break building or was it just off the cuff play? Um, yeah, I made, at the end of the games, I made some good breaks every yeah. time. Um, <laughs> every time they got close, I made breaks. So uh, that's what you need to do to win it. And um, yeah, I did it in style. That's the most pleasing part, maybe, mm. um, because I, I beat all the good players. You know, sometimes players get a maybe an easier draw, uh, sure. which is oh, it's never the case. But you know what I mean. And but I, I played, I played Williams, Ronnie, uh, yeah. Selby, Ricky. So. I had a really tough draw, so to win it yeah. in that way was really special. Yeah, the three world champions, I suppose, yeah. after the Mark Williams win, it was like, I think I could do some damage here, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, after, after the Williams game, I, yeah. I was really like proud of myself because he's a legend. And if you beat him in the best of seven, OK, but to beat him best of 25 mm. is, is really tough. So that was really good for my career, just just that game. Yeah. Well, we, we know that you were very proud of yourself after the Mark Williams game because allegedly you were out until 6 a.m. <laughs> the night after. was Is that true? It is true. Yeah. It is true. Yeah. Okay. And Where did you go? I mean, was it, I mean, you know, let's talk about the party as well. Like, was <laughs> it was it partying in a club or was it at a hotel bar with a couple of drinks? No, it wasn't a club, but it was in Belgium. So oh, right. Okay. Oh, because you I go went, back and forth, right? I went back to Belgium okay. first and then yeah. I went out. But you know the strange thing is, I'm normally I'm not a party guy, so okay. I don't really go out at all. So uh, it was just um, so that just win for the meant champs. that win meant so much to you. You you wanted to celebrate? No, no, no. Okay. It wasn't like that. No, okay. I just some friends asked me to go out, and she <laughs> wanted to go out, so we just went out. That's it. <laughs> was, was there ever a thought in your mind though, that particular night that? Maybe I need to go home soon because I've got one of the biggest games of my life in front of Sullivan coming up. Yeah, I just like to go home in between games just to feel like in your comfort zone. Okay. I don't really like to stay there because there's people on the streets constantly asking for pictures and yeah, talking yeah. about snooker. And 
Uh, I really love snooker, but I don't really like to talk about it that okay. much. You mm. know, away from it, I, I like to have my own life a little bit. So that's why I always want to get away from it, mm. like the, the, the snooker. And um, yeah, that's why I always choose to go home. Okay, so let's, um, let's put something straight here. So you were partying during the World Champs, which is what you've said. Yeah. Um, there was very little practice, again, what you said. Is that normal procedure for you during tournaments? No, it isn't. No. <laughs> uh, and there was no practice, actually, literally no, none. None, no, okay, no. okay. No. No so, but, so why? Why at the World Champs? Because you, you were constantly bashed at the fact that you weren't practicing. There was snooker <laughs> experts saying, this is ridiculous, why aren't you practicing? Your methods were questioned. So why, so why this time? Yeah, I think that's why I did it, to show that maybe practice is, is overrated, you know? I've always <laughs> said it. Um, I remember when I won China in 2017 and the tournament after that, I was in the practice room with Lizowski. Yeah. Jack and he's really keen on winning a tournament and he asked me what what should I do what should I'm practicing six seven hours a day and I said stop practicing <laughs> yeah. so, put the cue down yeah just yeah. practice a little more, uh, less you yeah. know so um, I've always been a big fan of not practicing too much because every time I, I, I come into a tournament I feel hungry to mm. to make breaks and stuff like that and when you practice a lot you feel sometimes a bit bored of the game and sure. you don't really feel that motivation to make the breaks I think. So now that you've proven the point that practice, no practice is good, <laughs> is this going to be um, something that you adopt going forward? Is it the winning formula for you? Um, uh, no practice is difficult because I was a bit rusty against Ricky in the first round mm. so no practice may be a bit too much but sure. just like not many hours, just yeah. one hour a day maybe. <laughs> not even one hour yeah. a day I think. Because okay. Um, okay. when I play like sometimes I play for 10 minutes and I feel really sharp and then I just stop. Okay. And then it feels like I'm, I've played three hours, you know? Yeah. So why should I carry on if I could feel sure. good? Sure, sure. You met your girlfriend two weeks before the world. That's quite drastic that you impress her by winning the world championships, <laughs> Luca. Is, I mean, was that the plan? <laughs> <laughs> it was always the plan, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy if you think about it because that's the first tournament she saw. Sure. And it's me winning the world. I mean, yeah. Everyone else that I know, they've watched me for like mm. uh, maybe 16 years yeah. and they've never seen me win it and now she, that's the first tournament she saw me play and She's a lucky charm, it, so. right? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How did you meet her? Just through Instagram. Okay. Um, her father plays as well. Okay. He's a very good player and uh, I've known him for a long time and uh, so yeah, she texted me on Instagram and I've actually, just a year later, we, we, we finally met because yeah. before that we didn't meet. So, uh, okay. It was, yeah, that was just before the Worlds. Oh, wow. Do you play against her dad? Yeah, I played him uh, just recently. Okay. And he, he beat me. So he beat you. <laughs> that says Did how you good he is. You, ha you had to let him win, right? That was it. <laughs> I'm not like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> he just played really well. Oh, I love that. He's got one up on you now. Um, <laughs> I can see your tattoos on your hands. And it says free, free bird. Free bird. I love yeah. that. Is that how you live your life and how you play snooker as well? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Mm. I mean, uh, I don't think many people see me like this, but I love mm. wildlife. I love nature. Yeah. I mean, I don't look like it because I've got tattoos. I've got a <laughs> Ferrari and all that stuff. Yeah. But actually, I'm, I'm the opposite of how I look. Yeah. I guess. Mm. Uh, I don't like partying. I, I like walking in nature and stuff like that so that's, that's going to be interesting for a lot of people to yeah. hear because i think the headlines for you during the worlds were party animal wins yeah. his way to the top party yeah you know? it's, a, it's the opposite that's yeah. the funny thing about it yeah. and and does did, did that annoy you that the headlines were saying that about you when oh, actually no. you knew what you were in real life no no i, I never have the sort <clears throat> of urge to like yeah. to show people okay how i really am like it if they know, they know, and if they don't know, they, they don't know, so it's, it's fine. I, yeah. I'm like in my own bubble a little and, bit, yeah. And so how did you adopt that mentality to life? It's quite hard to get, especially when you're living in the spotlight almost. Yeah, I've, I've always had it since I was young. I've always yeah. been the same, actually, yeah. Very calm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really hard to get me, like, how do you say, like angry or something. Yeah. It's nearly impossible. I don't know. Yeah. Because you were saying that you live um, in a forest. Yeah. Right. And obviously intentional because you love nature and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that's where my parents lived and I bought their house yeah. two years ago. So um, for me, it's a perfect place. Mm. It's quiet and lovely nature and yeah, mm. it's my home. Well, I know you've had a really busy summer. Obviously, you and Laura have been traveling the world. Tell, yeah. tell us about the last couple of months. Yeah, it's been crazy. I mean, we've been to Dubai twice. Yeah. We've been to Spain for a week. We've been yeah. to Hong Kong. Uh, America, Los Angeles, yeah. <laughs> just Vancouver, living it up. yeah, just everywhere actually. Yeah, yeah. seen the whole world, and uh, I thought, well, it's it's the only time to we have to do it. Um, yeah. So we have to do it now, and uh, but we we're really looking forward now to the like the normal life again. Okay. Uh, just being at home, and we got a dog now, so we need to raise him a little bit, and <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, it's nice to be back home. Your dad's very important to you, isn't he? I remember that moment when you won the title and you had that embrace and your heads came together. Do you, yeah. ever, do you ever watch that back? And no, you think, not no? really, no. I've, I've, I've only watched it back once, like yeah. the semi-final, not even the final. Yeah, why did um, you watch the semi-final back? It was because so I just intense. wanted to see how I got back into the <laughs> yeah. game for 45. You were like, was that real, what I just did? <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe okay. I watched the final break of the final though once. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, when it's gone, it's gone, you know, I'm not really like, yeah. sometimes I think about it though. Sure. And it still feels strange sometimes to be world champion. Yeah. Especially yeah. how I did it because I could have lost every game. It's mm. just an incredible yeah, story. Yeah. Um, but what, what did your dad say to you? Can you remember those words, if any? He was shouting, but I, I didn't understand <laughs> one word he said. <laughs> just pure, he, yeah, he was, pure joy. Yeah, just joy and yeah. relief. And yeah. I had the same feeling, you know. Um, but yeah, even before the Worlds, I was happy with my career and I was doing well. Yeah. I was in the top eight of the one year, sure. list, like three or four seasons in a row. So I was doing well already. Yeah. But just to, to take it off like the World Championship is quite special, I think, because I mean, players like uh, Jimmy White, Barry Hawkins, mm. Ali Carter, Ding Jung Reed, they've never won it. It's, yeah. So it's crazy to be ahead of them, actually. Yeah. yeah. What did he say to you after? Do you remember any of the words after that you said? Uh, my dad? Yeah. Um, not really. No, um, I think after the Worlds, it was straight back to business and yeah. he was like responding to media and sure. sending emails everywhere. So <laughs> yeah. we didn't really get to enjoy mm. the moment, to be honest. Yeah. I've heard you say before about your dad, he's, um, he's helped you at times when maybe perhaps, you know, before in your career that you felt you wanted to quit or maybe mm -hmm. stop playing. Yeah. And he's been the confidence and belief that you haven't had. Yeah, yeah, I've had it in the beginning of my career Yeah, where I wanted to quit and I still have it sometimes now where I just think maybe I want to go just go back to a normal sure. job or something. And is he always there in your ear saying, no, this, this, is, this is what you do? Yeah, for, for him it's very simple. Sure. You're a snooker player and you have to stay a snooker player. <laughs> There's no other way for him, okay. so he's very black, black and white. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a bit different in that case, but... Uh, yeah, obviously, just I just want him to be my dad, like just because he's a really nice guy. Sure. And I'm a snooker player, but apart from that, I just want to have a nice time with him. You know? When you hang out with him, do you ever have to say, "Look, Dad, stop, stop talking about snooker"? <laughs> oh yeah. Do you? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, just everything. He's very. My parents are very. Um, how do you say? Protective, maybe. Yeah, sure. Like, like they always want to have everything perfect but yeah it doesn't yeah. always have to be like, no, no. like even now before a game they ask me did you eat something before the game and, <laughs> and then i always say i'm not a runner i'm not a cycler <laughs> just a snooker player we don't really need that much energy to play a game oh of you'll always be there <laughs> you'll always be their baby you'll know that uh, now with a dog now that you're a parent okay yeah so yeah, true, true. Yeah. <laughs> he must have been and your whole family must have been very proud when you got back to belgium and the impact that had of you being a world champion here did you have like a mini fe mini festival almost a welcome home party yeah we did we did and everyone yeah. was there my family was there in france and um i'm very honest and i have to say it's not my favorite thing to do but okay. it is what it is and i just had to be there to like be nice to the people and talk to them and they were really happy to see yeah. me so it's good yeah. for them yeah what do you think your legacy now is as as a world champion in belgium will will be like and what will the impact be like here in belgium uh, i think just snooker is just more famous now yeah and that's about it you know um i don't know what it's gonna do i don't think it's gonna have an impact like kim clays did when she was mm -hmm. big in tennis or yeah yeah 
other people in sports, it's not going to happen like that. I think it's just going to stay the same, but just a bit more popular and a bit more famous. And yeah, yeah. That's it. You said you wanted as well to be a nice world champion. Do you want to say, what, what did you mean by that, being a nice oh, world champion? Oh, just in the way I play. Okay. Um, and I think, yeah, just off the table, I'm, I'm probably one of the most humble people yeah. that could win a world champion, although a lot of people think op the opposite of that, which is funny. Yeah, yeah. But that's obviously because when you have a Ferrari, suddenly people think you're a... Uh, flashy, you just yeah, into money, that type of thing. It's just nonsense, but yeah, I'm, I'm always very simple and quiet and... Yeah. yeah. And do, do you think, you know, over the last three months or so, four months, have, have, you, have you been a nice world champion? <laughs> In terms of what? <laughs> well, of, of what you wanted. You wanted to be a nice world champion. Do you think you're, you're following through? Um, I, I think so, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I think the people uh, love my style mm. of play. Yeah. And when I do exhibitions and there's like hundreds of people wanting a photo, or I'm, I give everyone yeah, the yeah. same amount of attention and mm. I just talk to them like they're my friends. Like some, You can see some people are like, um, how do you say it, surprised by how, yeah. how much I speak to them yeah. because they, they're like, they expect something different. So yeah. um, it's good, it's good. I it's nice that. to connect with people. Absolutely. Um, are you excited for the season ahead now? Yeah, very excited. Um, it's a shame though that my queue got lost. Well, let's um. talk about the queue <laughs> because you, you're having a nightmare with the snooker queue. So yeah. just tell us, yeah, tell us what happened. Yeah, so when I got back from Seattle uh, yeah. to Frankfurt, uh, it didn't show up, my queue. And um, yeah, it was my favorite queue. I won it. I won the world championship with it, so... Uh, so sentimental, and yeah. a queue that you've had for how many years? Um, maybe like two years now. Yeah. Yeah. But I got really used to it, and it's... Yeah, it was the best queue I've ever had. Oh. My favorite queue ever. So just run us through, if people don't know, how, how snooker players travel with a queue. What, what, how do you... Because it doesn't break down or anything, does it? It's, you know... How, yeah. how do you How do you pack it up? Yeah, it's in like a big ski case. Okay. And it's, it's a nightmare to travel with. I think okay. every, every snooker player knows that. And, uh, <laughs> sometimes I wish I was a dark player, just like a <laughs> just small a tiny, case. Yeah, so what did the airline say? What, and what, what? Yeah, they, they said just report it online, like fill yeah. in the form and mm. yeah, just hope you get it back. I'm still waiting for it. It's totally gone. I don't know where it yeah. is. When I check the status, it says uh, still searching for it. I mean, so. did people on the plane know that you were the world snooker champion? Oh, no, no, I don't no. think so. No. I mean, someone might have spotted you. You need to check if the snooker queue is on eBay. Yeah, if I would yeah. fly from, from Belgium or to Belgium, then yeah. I think many people would okay, know okay. me, but not from Germany. Oh, so, uh, so, going back to the initial question, are you excited for the season ahead? Obviously, is that something which is in the back of your head worrying you that you don't have your special queue? Yeah, normally I don't worry about it, but no. this time I do. Um, because my other queue is not that good and I'm not that used to it and yeah. the other one was so good and I felt like I couldn't miss sometimes and now it's going to sure. be different and obviously I've traveled a lot I'm still a bit tired of jet yeah. lag and all of that so I'm not quite confident in the first tournament but okay. um, yeah maybe the first one is just a bit of practice and mm. then Shanghai is going to be like the first really yeah. proper tournament for me. I was going to say you know obviously winning the world championships you must feel mentally as a player so much different. Are, are you are you satisfied with one win, or, or do you want to take over the world? Oh no, um, <coughs> I'm not like that. Like I don't I don't really set goals. Okay. Like sometimes I, I watch other players and they're like so keen to win triple crowns, and I'm yeah. I don't I, I don't really care. I know I say it so many times I don't care, but it's true uh, for me. I just love that feeling of winning. Okay. Like sometimes when I'm on the on the brink of, of winning, I'm just thinking, well, if I win, then we're gonna have nice dinner tonight and <laughs> everyone's gonna be happy. <laughs> so I'm thinking about that and not thinking sure. about the money or the ranking points. So I'm, I'm really different in that yeah. perspective. So you don't write down any goals? No, nothing. no, because winning a small tournament for me is the same as winning a big one. Wow. Uh, obviously the world is, is really something special, yeah. it's, it's different, but. I mean, if I win Gibraltar or, or Germany, for me, it's the same because yeah. it's a winning feeling and I just love that feeling, you know? Yeah. Do you, do you love playing snooker? Yeah, I love playing snooker. Yeah. 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 Cause I think you've been misinterpreted in the past that you don't really care about it. How does that make you feel? Yeah. 
I understand it because that's my character, you know. I'm sure. very. It, do you feel like you, you love it and it's your job and you love your job? I just love playing when I'm on the table. Like, I loved winning the world championships. Like, potting that last ball was amazing. But after that, like, all the attention and mm. it's not my thing, you know? I just, uh, for me, it would be nice to just pot the last ball, get the trophy, and then everyone, everything just stops <laughs> and I go back to normal life. That would be yeah. I ideally for me, yeah. Luca, thank you so much. A massive good luck thank for uh, the season ahead. As, as the reigning world champion, I hope your snooker queue turns up. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. I hope you find it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.